I'm having some of my favorite leftovers today. It's leftover shahi paneer from last night. I have a vegan recipe on my blog and I make it at least a couple of times a month. And I often make it for guests because it's just such a crowd pleaser. And for that I make naan. And I forgot to wrap these correctly. I just wrapped them in a little bit of cloth last night because I was in a hurry. I didn't really want to clean anymore. So that's what I did and forgot about them. But now, they're quite hard, but they're not unsalvageable. So what we're going to do here is that we're gonna fry them up really quickly in the air fryer. I give the air fryer a lot of heat, but I mean, I do use it. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna turn on our water and just gently just add a little bit of water on both sides, just so it's a little bit moist. And then we're gonna pop it in the air fryer for about 30 seconds. What heat am I doing on? Doesn't matter. 190 Celsius. And it's gonna be so good. Now check this out. Ouch. Okay, it's a little bit hot. There we go. Floppy, very warm naan right there. I just burned my fingers tremendously trying to move this, but we have the leftovers. Usually I serve the sauce and the rice separately. But I just saved everything like this. We're gonna take a little bit of the naan, gonna dump it in, scoop it up. This is my favorite thing in the whole world. This is so good. I have a small DIY thing that I want to do today. So a while ago, I got these clip-on earrings in a thrift store and I love them to bits. They're dangly, which is what I prefer my earrings to be. They're so amazing and cute and I love them. However, I don't wear them a lot. And I think the main reason is that they kind of remind me of that sort of boho era that I was in. And I don't necessarily wear that kind of stuff anymore. So I got them, I was excited about them, I styled them a few times and then I just didn't really return to them, so to speak. But recently I really looked at them and I don't know why I didn't think about this sooner, but I can take the clip-on part out of the earring and then I can use this for something else. Then I looked at the part that was no longer attached to the earring and realized that this black ring is actually really cool. So if it was just that on the clip-on, I would probably wear them a lot more. So I think what we need to do is that we need to detach this duck ornament from the ring and that shouldn't be that difficult. Alter your jewelry, you don't really need a lot of specific tools. Remember when I was a young alternative emo kid, I did basically all of my own jewelry because you couldn't really buy stuff like you can today. And also the entire idea of subcultures is about DIYing and making things yourself. And one of the things that I did a lot of was buying thrifted jewelry and then altering them to look more alternative and more edgy did that tons and I didn't have specific tools for it. I just used my nail clippers. These are perfectly fine to do that. So there is a tiny little ring here that you can just simply, oh, there we go, easy. So as adults, I think we often forget to alter the things that we have to fit our specific needs and preferences um, because we're just very used to being able to buy things just as is. And uh, it's incredibly satisfying to see the opportunities in things that would otherwise not really have been your style or perhaps something you've grown out of, you can alter it and make it you and make it something you want to wear every single day. I am frankly obsessed with this new version of these clip-ons and the thing is they're really comfortable as well so I was kind of bummed out that I didn't use them more because they are one of the most comfortable pair of earrings that I have. We got it and this is so cool. As it sometimes often happens, my ordinary lunch turns into a project. So let's go over the components here. I wanted some pasta, so I made ravioli. The cream sauce made with vegan cream based on oats. And then we chopped up some chives because I really, I love this plate. Okay, so this is, this is the inspiration. I have this and then I also have a dark blue one and I already arranged the dish in it. I had this feeling however, I really wanted to use the spiralizer but it does not work on Granny Smith apples, at least this one completely fails so I'm just gonna have these as a snack.
Also, what is a dish even without some powder? This is my stinging nettle powder that I made last summer. This is just my very high-tech tripod. And this is the dish, but let's arrange it in the other plate as well. So we just have four ravioli and then we replace the twill. It doesn't touch the ravioli, so it creates a little dome for it. And I think that is so delightful. The dish. So I don't know why my lunches always end up being like this, but let's make another one in this one. I already have photographed this, so I want pictures in the light one to see which one works the best. This is a little bit smaller, this plate, so we have to figure out place for ravioli without it looking weird. So we have the ravioli. If you are interested in learning how to make vegan pasta from scratch and also the filling for the ravioli, I have that linked down below. I typically use cashews and spinach. That's my typical combo and plenty and plenty of nutmeg. Parsley, sprinkle generously. And the stinging nettle. <laughs> I just inhaled like a cloud of stinging nettle powder. Oh, oh, a little bit of salt. And then we take some olive oil and just like a little. Then just to see what it looks like, I take the twill from the other one and I place it on here. The thing is, because this is smaller, I think this is so nice. This also looks very, very nice. You get the sort of elegant look where the twill just covers the whole dish and like the whole bowl part. I love that. Creating an elegant look and then just having the whole kitchen be chaos. The best part of this process is always getting to eat the dish afterwards. Banger. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I kind of want to take everything out of my kitchen, put it into my living room and just really deep clean everything and sort through everything that I have in my kitchen and find every single thing, the best possible space for it. So it's organized and lovely. But this is one of those projects I feel like is really good in my head. And when I start to do it, I run out of energy halfway through it. But I just really want to do it. And I've been wanting to do it for days. So I think we just need to get started. There's a cleaning element involved here because I just feel like the room needs a deep clean as well. But it's also just because it's incredibly satisfying to place everything back into the kitchen. But I fear I might regret this. We're doing it anyway though. Also, the fit is um, 10 out of 10. The plastic free cleaning utensils are popping. I've had this stepping stool since I was 15 years old. Just a quick update. Um... We have stuff here, we have stuff here, and this is currently my living room. Completely stocked with so much stuff. I have been thrifting my little heart out and I am faced with the consequences currently. What is happening? I think this, once and for all, puts the sustainable lifestyles are always minimalist completely to rest. What is happening here? Like this is thrifted heirlooms, stuff that hasn't been bought in stores. But the quantity, when it looks like this, mind you, I haven't gone into my cupboards yet. This is just everything that was on display in the kitchen, on my shelves, on my kitchen counter, in my window. No! Recently got those two ice cream glasses from my dad. We had them in my house when I was growing up and we always had ice cream from them on Friday nights. I haven't used them for ice cream yet, but I'm so excited to do so. I'm also thinking, should we do sort of a reverse haul? Like things that are not newly bought things, but the stuff that we've had the longest time. Could that be fun? Because I have so many heirlooms that I have used for ages and ages and things that I have from my childhood home and things that I just still use every day that I've used for 20 years. It could be very fun to do. Let me know if that's something you want to see. One of the main inspirations behind the project today is because the rugs that I have here are kind of 
yeah, there's air underneath because they're placed in a certain way. I need to stretch them out and the way that the shelves are standing, this happens. So we need to fix this and I've been bothered by this for ages. It looks like I'm moving out. Look, I removed everything from the window, everything here. It looks like I'm moving out. The sound is very different in the kitchen now because I don't have all my stuff, all my rugs on the floor, but I still want to take you guys through some of my cleaning products. I am currently in the process of cleaning underneath the sink, which is my least favorite thing to do. And I don't think I've given it a deep clean since I moved in, just superficial, small, everyday cleaning. So it was definitely needed. Also because I think I spilled some soap down there and it was just sitting there just the uh, cleaning products that I use this is my bulk cleaner I also have my own homemade cleaning agent with vinegar and orange peels then for the very tough stains I have a little metal sponge these are pretty reusable and then I have my cloths I have talked about these for ages and ages these are crocheted cotton cloths that I use for everyday cleaning, deep cleaning, that I use for dishes. I also have dish racks like this that I use, but these are the cleaning ones and these are the wiping ones. And then I have my good old dish brush. But I'm so close to getting sick because this is so gnarly. This is pure adulthood joy. I hope that doesn't sound too sad, but this was so satisfying. If you know, you know. After I washed down all the surfaces, I started placing things back into the kitchen. I also realized that my KitchenAid was looking super grimy. So I used a little needle to get into all the small nooks and crannies. Is this always necessary? No. But was it satisfying? Yes. I have collected plastic-free kitchen tools and utensils since I started Zero Waste back in 2015 and I still have a hard time not picking up a good spoon or ladle if I see it in a thrift store, but that's a problem for another day. Reorganizing my spice rack too? I don't know, I don't have a system per se, I just have jars without labels and only I know what's in them, which isn't the most effective system I do realize. I haven't found a good way of organizing my spices yet, so if you have some tips, I am all ears. Welcome to my floor. I just put out the rugs again, gave them a quick vacuum, but um, my vacuum doesn't pick up my like fallen off hair. It gets collected in the rugs and it's really difficult to get with the vacuum, but I have another solution for that. And if you have followed my channel for a while, you know what I'm about to do, because I shared this years ago as well, but it's time for a recap. This is a shoe, no duh. And this shoe specifically has this pattern on the bottom that is really, really great for picking up anything that gets caught in my rugs. So we're gonna use this. I call it the vacuum shoe. What you gonna do? This works so incredibly well. Check this out. I'm just gonna come down to you guys right now. So even though I just vacuumed, I was able to pick all of this up with the shoe. It gets caught in the rubber sole and that's what it does. Really, really nifty. So I do this on my rugs every time I already vacuumed just to make sure I get everything. This is my little collection of vintage glass. And speaking of green, I also got this plant from a friend a few years ago and it has been growing like crazy. I'll have to repot it soon, but for the time being, I'll just untangle it a bit. These are my kitchen nunchucks. I don't know why they're out here, but now I joke around with them once in a while and it's a whole ass miracle that I haven't broken anything in my kitchen, to be honest. There's a foam layer around them, but they still pack a punch. This spring cleaning was a breath of fresh air. I am leaving for a little vacation tomorrow and I'm so happy that I'll be able to come back home to a clean house. I also got a chance to rearrange some stuff so that the kitchen reflects my routine and needs. Did I need to spend a whole day doing this? Probably not. 
did I have time for it? Probably not. But I'm so happy that I did it anyway. I always feel a million times better when my surroundings are clean and organized. So this was definitely also an investment in my mental health. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and have a really amazing day, guys. Take good care of yourselves. Until next time. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!